Hello, Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the tool menu. The tool menu is a slightly hidden feature in Light Zone. And I didn't talk about it in basic tool anatomy because this can affect more than one tool. So now let's take a look at that. I have the hue saturation uh, tool here. Number one is active, it's orange. If I right click in this blanks area right here between the name of the tool and the help button, you see a drop down menu has appeared. The first thing in the drop down menu is disable. If I right click it in, you see it's enable. Basically, all that's doing is checking or unchecking this box right here. The next thing down is lock. This locks the tool. You see everything over here has been replaced by a padlock symbol and the tool is grayed out. Notice that is exactly what you have with the raw tone curve tool. If you're working in raw, you get a raw adjustments tool and a raw tone curve tool. We'll be talking about all that in a later video. Note that it is locked. We do not recommend at this time that you unlock these tools and play with them. Once you are more familiar with folk with the program, and after you've watched Doug Pardee's excellent video on creating your own raw tone curves, then you can experiment with this. But until that time, leave that one alone. We'll go back up here now, right click again, and now we can unlock the tool, number two. Let's right click again. Number three is remember preset. Click this and then you can move all of these sliders around. We'll do stuff crazily here. You can even use the eyedropper tool and pick up another color. You can do all kinds of things. When you go back up to the tool and right click on that blank area, you can go apply preset. It's number four down and the tool remembers all of these things including what you had originally picked up with the eyedropper tool. It's a nice way to be able to play around with something after you have been using it um, and remember those presets. You don't have to commit them to your own memory. If you're like me, that's getting more and more difficult to do. Let's right click again. Now we can collapse the tool from here. We can expand the tool from here. That's the same as using this little triangular button here. Right click again. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop a little bit further down to the third one from the bottom. I'm going to click expand all. Well, this expands your entire tool stack. Right clicking again, I can collapse all. I'm going to expand all again. I'm going to right click again. And now there's another one below collapse all and that's collapse others. So everything but this active tool will collapse. There you go. A little bit of a time saver. Now finally down here at the bottom there's delete which is the same as hitting the X button right there. And above that is something called auto expand. I'm going to collapse this and now look what happens when I just click on an area it auto expands. The problem with auto expand is that if it's on and you try to use this triangular tool to expand the tool you see it will only expand if you hold it down. Left click and hold. But if you just click it, it disappears immediately. So that can kind of confound you a little bit, but you may find that that suits your workflow. You can now do don't auto expand and we're back to normal. So that's a little bit of a highlight of the hidden tool menu that you get right clicking the blank area between the name of the tool and the question mark help button.